Don't remember a lot about those days uh, as far as going to the track and everything because it literally was every dirt track and small track from uh, here to, to Maine that, that my dad would, would uh, race at. Probably at least four races uh, every week from Thursday through Sunday and sometimes he would even uh, participate in two races in one day. I wanted to be home with them and spend some time in their life, but thank God I had a wonderful wife in Martha. She would take them with us to the races as much as she could. We got to do things that other people didn't get to do. And, and you know, at that time, racing wasn't, uh, stock car racing wasn't as big a deal uh, as it has become. Uh, but to us, it was a big deal. That's the only life that we knew. We traveled, uh, we, we literally ate out of the back of the station wagon. Uh, you know, we took all of our, our food with us. My mom uh, had sandwiches and, and everything fixed for us. And you know, that's how we lived and we didn't know any different. I remember the Pearson boys a lot and the Petty kids and um, Kelly Arbor's children playing with them. And Darlington was my favorite place. That's all I remember because underneath the scoreboard in the infield, they had a playground and that was just the ultimate for us. When you were at the racetrack, you were uh, you were looked on as part of a special racing family, and uh, and that was always cool. And in in the neighborhood, I, I just went about my life, you know, as any kid would. Racing is Ned's business, but as a professional, he knows himself, the road, and the equipment. Now, I guess you would consider myself one of the hardest chargers. I feel like it's important to get out front and try to maintain that position as long as you can. Ned Jarrett had long been at the front of the sportsman division, but he was just another driver in NASCAR's top class. I thought after one of those championships that, hey, they'd come to me, but they didn't, car owners. And so I, I started knocking on doors, and I found a 1957 Chevrolet in Kannapolis that was owned by R.C. McDaniels, and those were the best race cars back in those days, were certainly as good as anything out there. But we were always having trouble with it. It would just break. Ned Jarrett, trying to avoid trouble, bounces off the guardrail. Like the others, Jarrett steers his car away from the fence and limps around to the pits by way of the track apron. To be competitive, Ned needed better equipment, but that cost money. Where he lacked in funding, he made up for in faith. There was a 1957 Ford for sale in my hometown of Newton, North Carolina. Junior Johnson was driving that car, and they were building him a new Dodge to run in the Southern 500 at Darlington. They wanted $2,000 for it. They said, what are you going to buy it with? They knew I didn't have any money. I said, well, I'll wait till the bank closes, and I'll give them a check for it, and I'll go to Myrtle Beach. There was a race on Saturday night, and it paid $950 to win. I said, there's one at Charlotte at the old fairgrounds track on Sunday afternoon. It also pays $950 to win. So they laughed and said, well, you must be crazy. I just knew that he had a new race car, and we were going to Myrtle Beach in Charlotte, and that's what would happen. And uh, no idea that uh, if it didn't go too well, didn't know what might happen on Monday whenever we got back into town. But that was my dad, believing and knowing that, that he could make that happen. As the race went on, I began to get used to the car. Well, I uh, found myself running up front. Hardest race I ever drove in my life. Ned's first win at the premier level demonstrated his hardened demeanor. Half the cost of the new car was covered, but there was one thing the meticulous driver hadn't planned on. Back in those days, the way that they would build the steering wheel up so that you could get grip, they would put foam rubber on the steering wheel and wrap it with the electrician's tape, and that would give you a good cushion. Well, they had just done that to this steering wheel. Unfortunately, whoever wrapped the steering wheel, he had wrapped it backwards, and the edge of that electrician's tape was, as I would turn the wheel to the left, it was cutting into my hand. And uh, it finally just eat the meat off the bone. And uh, I didn't realize how bad it was until after the race was over. It was bold enough to risk a reputation for one win, let alone two. Ned needed first place money, but bandaged hands kept him off the lead. When Junior Johnson, the car's former driver, blew an engine, it was the relief Ned and his bank account needed. I won the race for him. Uh, you know, to make a check good because I was kind of the one that uh, talked Paul in the cell into me and uh, then put him a bad check and he, uh, if I hadn't won a race for him, he did, you know, the check wouldn't have been good. 
The miraculous weekend brought more than a race car. Skill and guts had shored up Ned's worth as a driver. A rival took notice. 